Hey, Damon DeMarco here for createx3.com. Somebody asked me recently about how to rewind the carriage strap or carriage string. Some typewriters have a strap and some have a string on a typewriter, on a vintage manual typewriter. And I said, but I did a video about that. And they said, well, I didn't see that one. And I said, yeah, it's part of this video over here. And they said, it's half an hour long. I don't want all that. Right. So what I did was I cut that part out of the video and I want you to take a look at this piece of information here. If you have any problem with the carriage band or carriage strap on your vintage manual typewriter, I want you to look at this very quick video, which can be applied to practically any carriage string or carriage strap or carriage spring, frankly, on a vintage manual typewriter. So here we go. Without further ado, pssst. There it is. Hey, Damon DeMarco here for createx3.com. And today I want to show you something. A new friend just dropped off this Corona 4. It's a gorgeous typewriter. It's in pretty good shape. I was right in the middle of typing this page when the carriage just stopped moving and now it swings freely. It does not respond to the keys. You can see right here that the carriage string, also known as the carriage strap, because in some bigger models it really is an actual strap that winds around the drum, is broken. I realized this might be a good thing to film because somebody else might have a similar problem and it's really not that big of a fix. So I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not that hard. A couple materials you're going to need. This is just fishing line. It's like 60 pound. Is it 60 pound? No, it's 30 pound. 30 pound test fishing line. 30 pound test is more than enough for the spring in your typewriter to pull the carriage across. So you can get this on Amazon. I'll give you a link for it down in the bottom below. Second thing you'll need, a spring hook. What is a spring hook? It's just a very long hook. You see that? For hanging on to things like springs and pulling them taut and looping them around things. My particular spring hook is very long, but it's it's segmented, it's screwable, right? So you can take it apart so that you can make a short spring hook or you can make a longer spring hook. You can see that this one comes with various heads that screw on the top. So we've got our spring hook, we've got our fishing line. Now let's get under the machine and see what we can tinker with under there and uh, fix the problem. If I were being 100% honest with you, the spring hook is not exactly necessary. The first time I ever fixed a typewriter draw band, which is another thing that they call a carriage string, I used a set of chopsticks that I kind of duct taped together and put a paper clip that I tied on the end of one of them. You'll see how I use that in just a second. All you really need is a, is a long extension of your grip and a little snag at the end. The extension has to be very, very narrow so that it can fit through the places that we're about to fit through, but that's basically all you need. If you want to buy a spring hook, mine costs like seven or eight dollars. And again, I'll put the link on Amazon down below. But here, take a look at how we use this. First, let's turn the machine around. One of the really nice things about these old Coronas is that the backs are almost always exposed. So you can see pretty much everything that's going on in here. Here, here is your spring. The more you turn this way, you can see where this thing, it's already let loose on its own. If you wind it counterclockwise, you're going to see that it wants to snap backwards. Like this, watch. Here I go. I'm going to wind it once, I'll wind it twice, and then let it go. See that? That is the action that draws the string up through this tiny pulley right here. And then the string runs through here under the carriage and attaches to a spot right here. Here you can see is the old line that snapped right here. But one end of that line is connected to this hook. And that hook basically creating an anchor point so that every time a key is pushed, the spring pulls the carriage across at a measured distance. Mm. One thing I should mention before I forget is that I measured the original string using this uh, old grade school ruler that I have lying around. It turned out to be 15 inches and so I cut a length of the fishing wire 15 inches and then I gave it like an extra inch for play because it's easier to adjust if you have a little bit more string to work with than if you have less string. So measure your string is really what it boils down to. I just fashioned a loop at the end of my 30 pound fishing line. Here's the loop end. The free end I snaked through this little hole right here, which leads down to the spring. Now we want to flip the machine over. You can see that the string that I fed through from below, yep, there it is. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a knot 
in this end of the string. And we want that not to be pretty sizable, not huge, but big enough that it's gonna fit into the hole in the spring so that it tucks away in there tight and grabs in. And then as the spring is wound, it has something to grab on too. There's one knot right there. Probably go a bit bigger with that. There, that's pretty good. I'm gonna say go one more time. Yeah, that's good right there. So this is the end we're going to tuck into the spring. On this end here, fed through the hole in the typewriter, we have the loop end. Now we're gonna change the position of the machine so that we can work with the spring. And what we have to do now is the spring wants to pull this way. So we want to wind it in the opposite direction. We're gonna do that about five times. Five rotations, give or take. Four possibly or five. You don't want to overwind it because you could snap the spring. You don't want to underwind it because then the spring doesn't have enough tension to pull the carriage across. Typically speaking, four or five winds is enough to really put a, a good deal of pressure on that spring. Here, it's going to be a good idea to have one of your spring hook attachments. See this one? Good to have that on hand because you're going to use this crazy end to sort of tuck the big knot that we just made into this part of the spring, this little gap, this little uh, preset alley here after we wind the spring. So here we go. And we have here our second rotation. Let's see if we can get better light on that for you. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's go at it again. If you release the spring while you're trying to wind it, you might, it's gonna hurt. You're not gonna lose a finger or anything like that, but it's gonna hurt, so try not to do that. I can already feel the tension on the spring is building up. Move with the thumb, hold with the index finger. Now we're on three, keep going. Oh, we lost it. Keep winding. Now we're on three. You can see that the spring gap is opening up here. The more you wind the spring, the more the gap opens up and exposes the place where the old string went in. So we can pick out that string right now while we're here, get rid of that as best we can. Let's go to four. Four, one more should do it. Five. Now comes the tricky part. Got to take this knot that we made, tuck it using our spring hook down inside the gap while holding the spring taut. It can be very tricky work, just be persistent. If you lose the spring, meaning you release it too early, it's okay, just repeat, wind it again. All right, it's in, sort of. Say goodnight, little spring. Go in there. Oh, shh. We lost it. Start again. And we wind. One. Two, three, four, five. I trimmed the ends off this knot this time, so maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. Lay the knot in there. Use your spring hook. Tuck it all the way down in there. Get in there, you mother. There we go. Did you see that? Now what happens, very important, do not release the spring until you are sure that its path is exactly where you want it to be and that it is free of any obstruction. Okay, and with this part of your spring hook, got your very long spring hook here, you're gonna feed that into the back of the typewriter here and under it, there we go. You can see it coming out here. I ended up tying on this little um, bit on the hook right here. And the idea now, we're gonna hook one hook onto the next. Okay, try and pull this all the way through. Gotta make sure that your spool up here is also in line. And you're gonna pull it out gently there. That should be right there. Find the place where it attaches. That's right here, as you can see. Get our screw ready. Put that right there, tighten that screw up. There, let's test it. Turn the machine back to its rightful position. Check the keys, check the space bar. Overall, 
not bad. But it turns out that there is another way to do this, which was recommended by Mary over at MyOldTypewriter.com. She calls it the reverse monk, and I actually tried it that way too, just to make sure that it works, and it does indeed. Well, I'll let Mary tell you. Check the link down below. It's MyOldTypewriter.com. It's a fantastic resource. I use it all the time. Mary, if you're watching, thank you very much for all that you've contributed. Thanks for watching. Damon DeMarco here for CreateX3.com. Come to our website. Go to createx3.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. Thanks for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay creative. <laughs>